Hello everyone, um, thanks very much for joining me on this video. My name is Jenna Mittelmeyer. I'm a lecturer in international education at the University of Manchester and I also co-develop um, a website called Pedagogies with International Students alongside my colleague Sylvie Lomer. Um, it's a resource website for anyone who teaches international students um, and there's also a subsection for colleagues who conduct research with international students with lots of different resources for researchers. So if you haven't seen the website, I'll post the link um, down below this video. Please do check it out. Um, the topic that I'm going to cover today came by request where someone asked me if I would have a little bit of a reflection about suggested topics or areas that I think research with international students can be conducted within to drive the field forward um, to develop more innovative research with international students. Um, so I guess just to preface that this is entirely my own reflections um, and I'm cognizant that, you know, it's not meant to be comprehensive in any sense. These are just areas that I think are interesting and innovative. Um, I would welcome any comments or suggestions of what you would add to this. So please do um, reach out or, or post below if you think there's anything that should be added to this list. Um, it'd be great to reflect on that more later. So let's start with what do I think is currently problematic about research with international students or, or what not to research. Um, a lot of this draws upon the work that I've done with my colleague Sylvie. Um, we did a systematic literature review recently looking at research within the UK about pedagogies with international students. Um, we found that a lot of the research tended to be small in scale in the sense that it was data collection within a single time period with a single group of students, usually with relatively small numbers. Um, the research tended to take place within researchers' own classrooms, so kind of opportunistic um, action research about researchers' own teaching practices, um, which, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but we saw very little interaction between lecturers, comparative research, um, research across different disciplines looking at the same topic. Um, so there was lots of kind of replication of smaller scale research within single classrooms. Um, we found that the research made limited use of theory. There wasn't always pedagogical um, a reflection of pedagogical research on the topic that was being conducted. Um, there was not a lot of conceptual and theoretical frameworks, um, limited criticality about issues of power and, and privilege within the research. Um, we found that most of the research was within a single discipline, within a single institution, and based within a single country. So again, not a lot of comparative research we found a lot of the research didn't focus on issues of interculturality. So it would mention that international students were participants, but wouldn't really engage with what that meant. Um, and many of the research studies wouldn't even reflect on the countries where students were from, kind of lumping international students into this homogenized group without engaging with the intercultural and, and cultural elements of their experiences. Um, and then, and a lot of our work, not just this paper, but kind of a, a thread through both of our works um, is reflecting on the way that research is framed often through a deficit lens. So a reflection of international students lacking particular skills, um, you know, assumed to, to not be engaged with pedagogies within the classroom. Um, we saw a lot of issues of, of you know, research assuming international students would struggle with language um, that they lacked criticality, lacked referencing conventions. Um, I have um, did an, a separate video about why I think a deficit lens is problematic. So I won't harp on that here, but please do check that out if that's of interest. Um, we found that there were also significant pockets of research in particular areas or around particular topics. So this helps frame us a little bit for understanding, you know, where are the the most significant amount of research already conducted. Uh, we found disciplines of business and education, particularly business, um, was a strong area of interest across the, the field of research in this area with limited engagement within other disciplines, even disciplines that have large amounts of international students, um, things like engineering or even within the social sciences. 
uh, we found that a vast amount of research focused specifically on Chinese international students. Um, that's probably because Chinese international students are the largest group of international students worldwide, but that was also at the expense of students from other backgrounds and other cultures um, that we found had a more limited voice or presence within the literature. Um, the research tends to focus within the global north, particularly the US, the UK and Australia, um, even though there are significant pockets of international students in other countries, most of the research is conducted within the global north and within English speaking contexts. Um, two areas of focus where there are a lot of research and a lot of um, reinvention of the wheel is the area of uh, intercultural group work and intercultural friendship, so friendships between home and international students. And then we found overwhelmingly that a lot of this research is using questionnaires or interviews. So if you're thinking about your research within any of these areas, that's not to say research can't be conducted in these areas, there's plenty of new avenues to explore, um, but you do need to have a significant read through what is already present. So again, we're not just reinventing the research that's already taken place, but really engaging with the significant amount of research within these areas that is already present. And again, that's not comprehensive. There's many others, but that gives us kind of a, a foundational understanding. Um, something that I see quite often, um, particularly when I receive PhD proposals from uh, potential PhD researchers, is research that focuses on experiences. Right, so international students' experiences in the UK or their experiences in um, academic classrooms, right? Um, and I think if you are thinking about that experiences, there's a need to, to really narrow that down. Um, so if we do just a quick search on Google Scholar, international students and experiences, there's 183,000 papers already written on this topic. And I think that a lot of the earlier papers so we're thinking maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago, um, there were a lot of exploratory research that needed to be done because this was um, not a new field, but a, a newer field in focus. Um, and there was a lot of exploratory research that was looking at general experiences, um, general um, engagements within classrooms, general academic transitions, um, but the field has moved on, right? We've got over 25 years of intensive research about international students. So um, that exploratory work, we already have that foundation. So a question I often encourage uh, students to think about is experiences with what? So we really need to narrow that down because academic experiences, social experiences, emotional experiences, these are concepts that are simply too broad. We, we need to, to really narrow something down to be able to make a meaningful contribution. So if you find yourself with that word experiences, have a real critical think about experiences with what? specifically, and thinking about the significant amount of existing research, what is going to be a new contribution of your research about experiences, given the vast amount that, that already exists. So let's talk about innovations. Um, I think first, research with international students could use a healthy dose of methodological innovations. Um, these are just some ideas of what we saw within our own work that is missing within the field. Um, so there's very little longitudinal perspectives. So how are um, international students' experiences within whatever topic you're researching, how does that develop over time across their period of study? How does that develop over several years of their program? How does it develop between years? So if we're looking at um, a, a lecturer who's teaching for multiple academic years, how does their practices develop and, and how do those changes impact um, different cohorts of international students? Um, we could think comparatively. So again, not just looking in a single site and single instance with a single group, um, but thinking um, how do experiences within this topic compare between different groups of students from different backgrounds? How does it compare across different disciplines, between different institutions, between different countries? So again, starting to make that um, broader generalization and um, through, through a lens of 
comparison between different settings. Um, moving away from the traditional questionnaire interview method, there's nothing wrong with that method, uh, but it has been overused um, within this particular subfield. And I think we can think a little bit more innovatively about how different creative research methodologies could be used to capture data from different perspectives um, and to look at these issues through different lenses. Um, the same with mixed methods approaches. How can we triangulate and look at phenomenon through different perspectives? Um, and, and then thinking about theory. So I mentioned a lot of the research in this area tends to be under theorized, um, not seen through a strong conceptual or theoretical lens. Um, we actually have on our list, um, on our website, a list of, I think around 50 different theoretical frameworks that are potentially used within internationalization research. It's a list that's ever growing and a work in progress. Um, but I think that's something that as researchers, we can start to think more about theory and how can we use a theoretical approach or a theoretical lens to see phenomenon um, in different ways. You know, that could be a unique contribution to the field. And um, here are some topics that I think are exciting to the field of, of um, research with international students. Um, one of those is about intersectionalities. I've talked before in my video about deficit lens, about there's a tendency to homogenize international students as a collective group and assume that their needs and their experiences are the same, um, even though they make up a really vast, diverse um, group of individuals from lots of different places with lots of different life histories and experiences. And so I think that's something um, we can think about within our research is those other facets of international students' identities and how they intersect with the experience of being a migrant student or an international student um, to, to develop a, um, an intersectional experience. So how can we think about things like um, international students and gender identity, race and ethnicity, um, disability, um, different religious affiliations, uh, LGBTQ plus identity, um, external markers of difference. So things like um, hijabi women or um, international students who wear yarmulkes, for example, these external markers that, that mark them as, as othered or, or different within the society where they're studying. Um, so there are, are many more here that aren't listed, but I think these intersectionalities have been ignored in a lot of the research about international students. There are a number of scholars now who are developing really excellent work about the gendered, racialized, ableist experiences of international students. Uh, within our website, we have a critical reading list where we have a section about international students and intersectionalities with um, some of our favorite papers that are being written on this topic. But I think you know there's a lot of uh, gaps in the literature about different facets of international students intersectionalities and this really marks an area um, that that could be in focus moving forward. Um, another topic that I think is an area that can move the field, field forward um, is thinking about the intersections of internationalization and decolonization. Um, so internationalization, the history of internationalization can't be divorced from colonization. Um, Again, we have a section on our reading list about the history of international higher education. Um, and, and there's a clear pattern of connection with colonial relations and the use of, of education as a tool for colonialism. Um, and I think that's an area that within the research um, until the last you know, five or 10 years had, had really been ignored, that, that legacy and role of colonialism and neo-colonialism in international higher education. So I think we can think more along these lines. And again, there's already scholars doing great work in this. Um, take a look at our reading list. Um, but thinking about how are inequalities reproduced through formal, uh, former colonial ties, or how are experiences shaped through colonization or former colonization. Um, there is kind of a, a, um, a strong uh, approach towards decolonization of the curriculum, uh, particularly in, in, in countries like the UK, the US, Australia, um, a recognition of the role, role of colonialism in our curriculum and teaching. Um, and I think there can be some reflection there about um, how efforts to internationalize the curriculum can be balanced 
with decolonization? What are some of the overlaps between these two efforts, and where do they um, where where do they converge from one another? Where are there problematic assumptions made within internationalization that are counter to our efforts for decolonization? Um, and what are the intersections? Um, and I think this is an area where we can have greater um, conceptual development and, and empirical reflection. And alongside that, um, there's a growing movement of critical internationalization studies. Um, if you're not part of the critical internationalization studies uh, network, there's a great network um, that's run by Sharon Stein, uh, has an excellent newsletter of colleagues from around the world who are working within this area, um, but looking at, at you know, the critical aspects of, of power, privilege, dominance, ethics um, within internationalization, um, in the ways that international students' experiences are inherently framed within these international inequalities. Um, and that's how issues of deficit narratives and stereotyping um, ends up coming out in, in practices is through these lens of, of problematic power differentials and imbalances of, of privilege within intercultural settings. Um, as we move, um, I won't say beyond a COVID world, but as um, some of us in some countries are getting back to normal or are seeing changes in our practices as a lasting legacy of COVID, um, the area of internationalization at a distance has really emerged within the last year and a half, two years, um, thinking about online and distance models across international borders. Um, this was a necessity during the, the midst of the pandemic, which is still a legacy for some places. Um, and I think we'll continue as, as uh, higher education starts to reflect on where we want to move forward in terms of online and distance models. So I think we can start to think more about who are international students when we think about internationalization and distance. What are their experiences? How does online and distance learning reshape or remodel approaches for internationalization. Um, we wrote a kind of conceptual piece, myself and some colleagues, um, about internationalization at a distance, well-timed, published right before the pandemic um, in January 2020, I think. Um, and we have some questions in the conclusion where we reflected on future areas of research. So I think this is an area that the pandemic has made um, more significant within the research about international students um, and is an area that there can be more conceptualization and, and more evidence collected. Um, similarly, I think within education research generally, there's a move towards recognition of the green agenda and of sustainability education, um, not something that we need to to grapple with within internationalization and, and international student mobility as well. So thinking about questions, you know, is international student mobility sustainable? What is unsustainable about current practices? Um, what is the material and the physical impact on the environment and on our world of mobility of students and staff? Um, and are there ways that internationalization could align with the green agenda and, and be made more sustainable? Um, and then finally, I'll, I'll say, I think there's areas where um, we have a lot of research um, that has focused on challenges and problems, um, recognition of areas of tension within our campuses, particularly between home and international students. Um, and I think that we need to move beyond documenting challenges and start to move towards um, developing evidence that can be generalized or, or transferred, um, not just within our own context, but to other contexts, um, other institutions. And so things like how do we develop evidence-based pedagogies that are interculturally inclusive, um, pedagogies with international students? How do we internationalize the curriculum in ways that are evidenced in ways that are inclusive, supportive? Um, how, how do we develop interventions um, that support intercultural engagements on campus? So we have decades of research that looks at the divisions, social divisions between home and international students. Um, so now we can move forward to think about what are some of the um, interventions that can develop that bridge between students from different backgrounds. Um, I think COVID has, has really shined a light on a, a problem that has existed on campus for decades, 
um, or I would argue since the existence of, of higher education, and that's about bias and racism on our campus. So how do we um, meaningfully combat that bias and racism on campus? And how do we do that through an intercultural lens, um, considering that students are, are bringing with them different ideas about race, about, um, about their identities, about how bias and racism should be addressed? How do we do that in an interculturally sensitive way on our campuses? Um, and then thinking about things like employability. How do we ensure that our students are employable in a, in a global world? Um, so we know that there are challenges around international students being employable if they return to their home countries or to other countries after their program. Um, but now what do we do about that within institutions? So I think just urging scholars to stop thinking about problems and start thinking about solutions. Um, so that ends me there. Um, thank you for joining me. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on what you would add to this, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.